Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another BMW 1 Series video. Now what we're going to be doing in this one is I'm going to be carrying out a replacement of the uh, the window regulator. Um, essentially what happened with the car, um, I was taking my son to work, he uh, opened the door and what happened was the window went all the way down and then there was this horrible noise uh, which sounds like a twanging sound that you would get from a cable snapping um, and then the window was all the way down and wouldn't respond to the buttons at all. So what I did was dropped him off at work, came back, popped the door card off and had a had a little look um, to see what had gone wrong. Um, I was expecting it to be a window regulator because of the sound it was making. I was not anticipating it being a motor. Here is the motor out of this door. Um, so what I had to do was um, investigate what went wrong um, and expect to water parts. So I pulled the door card off and found that the window regulator was indeed broken. Um, we'll have a look at it in a minute once, uh, once we delve into the door. Um, but obviously what I had to do in that instant, because I didn't have the part to replace straight away, was I had to put the window back up and secure it so that um, you know the, the car was watertight. So the window went back up, um, I removed the motor in, the, in order to allow me to put the window up. And then what I essentially did was jammed a piece of wood in there just to hold it up um, whilst I waited for the parts to arrive. So that's where we are now. As you can see, I have taken the door panel off already. I've done a video on how to do that, so go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the uh, in the description and obviously in the top corner now. But yeah, here we are. So what we need to do is just remove the vapor barrier uh, and have a look at the carnage left behind by the uh, by the failing window regulator. So yeah, let's uh, let's get amongst it. <laughs> Okay, what we need to do is gently peel back the vapor barrier from the from the butyl tape, this, this sticky stuff here. Trying our best not to rip, not to rip it. What we're gonna do is peel it off from the top and the sides and leave the bottom stuck because we shouldn't really need to take it all the way off. Pulling all the cables out that go through it. Like the speaker and the switch. Okay. So here we are, and here is the piece of wood that is holding the uh, the window in the up position. As you can see, I just secured it with three wood screws with washers on, and it's done the job um, because it's been best part of a week, and the window hasn't fell down. The only obvious difficulty is on a coupe when you open the door is the window supposed to drop slightly, but because there's no real lip um, on this car, it, it, it's been perfectly fine. Um, all it all it does is it just opens and doesn't drop it's uh, it's been perfectly good and it has rained and hasn't allowed water in so uh, we're perfectly happy okay so what we need to do is obviously we need to get a bit of wood out and we need to have a look at the window regulator okay so with the door panel removed you can see the kind of carnage that's been left behind here i did remove the motor um, and as you can see this is the pulley um, for the window regulator. So I'll pop the motor down there. The motor is perfectly fine by the way it works uh, as you would expect. Um, this pulley here is supposed to be in there and these cables, both that one and this one, are obviously supposed to be wound around this and hooked into like in there somehow um, and then obviously wind around like so um, and they work antagonistically so one unwinds and the other winds as as the motor turns so while as, as the motor is turning one is being wound around the drum and the other one is being unwound around the, the drum um, so that they go in opposite directions um, uh, depending upon which way obviously the window goes up and down but as you can see that one is absolutely toast this one um, goes to that side of the regulator goes to that end 
and this one obviously goes to this end. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely fact. So what we need to do, obviously, is um, remove it. Um, so yeah, what we'll do first is remove the screws holding me makeshift bit of wood. Um, hopefully the window won't completely drop. I don't think it will. Um, friction will probably hold it up. But we'll find out in a moment. It's a bit Heath Robinson, but obviously I couldn't leave the uh, the car with the, the window being allowed to be, you know, slide up and down at will. and the last one I'm going to do left handed just to spice my life up a little bit and there we go so now if I tug out we should be able to just slide it out there we go okay no longer required so now you can see the window is free to just slide up and down now it does slide up and down the rails as you would as you would expect there's one just in there that you can see it's sliding up and down the rails um so it's um you know it's still aligned it just doesn't stay up where it should so yeah what we need to do now obviously is we need to refit a um, brand new window regulator and that is what I've got in this box just here so if I open her up throw the box over there here is the brand new window regulator and there we are. That is what a window regulator looks like. And obviously these are the tracks where the uh, the window runs. Um, just there, you can see there's one just just there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's plenty of grease all over it, but what we need to do obviously is we need to get the old one out so that we can get the get the new one in. So yeah, let's um, let's begin with that and get the uh, get the old one out. Okay, so uh, in order to get the window regulator out, there's a couple of steps we need to follow. And the first of those is to uh, actually remove the window glass completely. Now, um, there's a couple of uh, like screws. It's quite hard to see. But in here, that there in the center of this is a clamp bolt. And on the back, there is like a wheel, like a star-shaped wheel um, that we will need to remove. Uh, now, I'm not going to be able to get the camera in there. In fact, I probably can. Uh, let me see if I can. There's like a... Uh, just here like a star shaped wheel um, I'm not sure if it's gonna show on the camera or not but just behind there there is a star shaped wheel and the same on this side just there my fingers are on it now that is the star shaped wheel okay so those um, need to be removed uh, before we can take the clamp bolts out um, so we do that in order but the first thing I'm going to do is remove the window trim on the outside of the car and that's quite easy to remove just take a non marring plastic tool like so and just pop it up and then gently prise it up all the way along don't be overly forceful with it because you don't want to bend it but um, it will come off pretty easily it's not held in with any <laughs> there's the window um, not held in with anything particularly grippy and then at the front, just pull it back towards the back of the door. Like so, there we go. Um, yeah, basically that slot there engages on this on here. And that's, that's all that holds it in. So we'll pop that to one side so it doesn't get damaged. And then we'll move on to the little hand wheels that we were just talking about. Okay, those little star wheels little hand wheel things that we need to remove um, a dealer a BMW dealer for example will have like a c-shaped spanner that will lock onto those uh, and pop them off 
um, but obviously I don't have one of those and nobody's going to have one of those um, and you're certainly not at all that you're going to buy to use the once that you may need to uh, replace a window regulator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try with a punch um, just to spin it off and all I'm going to do is engage the punch onto one of the teeth, onto one of the teeth of the, of the wheel um, and then take the hammer and just give it a whack and it's turning and then just keep going until such times it spins off which it eventually will um, just be obviously careful of the window glass because you don't want to hit it on the edge because if you do it could shatter so just be careful of that um, but there's plenty of room. Just keep going until it spins off. It's gone quite easy to turn. I can see it spinning. Hopefully you can you can see it turning through the glass. And then just keep going until it will spin off quite freely, which Yep, it feels like it is now. Let me see if I can get it off by hand. Yeah, it's coming off beautifully. Right. Get it all the way out. And there we are. That is it removed. Now, this plastic piece here is actually broken and it shouldn't be like that that's actually supposed to form part of this clamp um i think we'll probably get away with uh you know it'll probably go back on perfectly okay um so i'm not particularly concerned about it but we'll have a look at that afterwards okay so now you can see the back of the window is now independent of this clamp and what we need to do is exactly the same as the front one so i'll just repeat the process um and then i'll bring it back once we've got both of them removed and then we can hopefully lift the glass out of the door Okay, so there's both wheels removed. As you can see, they uh, both came off quite quite fine, you know, using the method which I use with a little punch. Uh, and obviously what we'll do is we'll put them on in exactly the same manner, they're just opposite direction. You just hit it in the opposite direction to tighten it. Okay, so now, here's the window. We can literally lift the entire window out of the car. And there we are. So. You know, if, you, if you've if you got a smash window or whatever and you need to replace it, this is what you would do um, to uh, to replace the window. You wouldn't need to go any further. You'd literally just put the new panel in and refit the screws. Um, okay, what I need to do now, obviously, is I need to put this somewhere safe where it's not going to get broken. And then um, we can actually move on to the, the regulator itself and get that out of the door. Okay, what we're going to do now is we are actually going to remove the regulator from the door. Um, and it's really, really easy. It's literally five, uh, about three nuts and a couple of bolts. Um, in fact, the ones at the bottom might even be nuts, we'll find out in a moment. Um, and it's, it's really, really straightforward. What we need to do is um, remove all of them and then it'll come out. The only difference being is because I've already removed the motor, which would sit um, roughly there, this bracket here would be screwed onto there like so and that screw would be in there um, obviously I've already removed all that bit so just discount that step um, but obviously if you haven't removed your motor already then you will need to remember to do that um, the motor doesn't actually be, need to be removed from the regulator in order to get it out of the car because it can come out as a unit and be removed later uh, but you do need to remove that screw in or otherwise you the, the back of the motor that lug there will be held in that little well, basically like that. That's how it is. That's how it holds uh, in the car. Okay, what we need to do is remove these nuts. That one there. That one there. And then underneath, just here, there's another two. I think they're nuts. I don't think they're bolts. Um, yeah, they are. They're nuts. So those two there need to be removed as well. Um, so I'll get all of those nuts removed, and then we'll peel the uh, peel the regulator out of the door. Um, Obviously, there's another one just here as well, which I did forget about behind this little plastic, um, uh, this little plastic cap. So bear that in mind as well. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. That's that's the five uh, that I previously mentioned. 
and obviously that screw there if, uh, if you need to remove it because you haven't taken your motor off yet. So I'll get all of them removed and then I'll bring you back and then we'll get the regulator out of the door. Okay, there we are. There's the five nuts removed. One, two, three, and then the two underneath. All good. So now, as you can see, it's all floppy all over the place. Um, that little slider just fell off, but that doesn't matter. Um, and again here. So now what we can do, feed it out. the uh out of the car um this little clip here that cable did go into it so just pop it off see this is absolutely busted so there we go so there is the old broken regulator and that is fit for nothing but the scrap so yeah I'll go and, uh, go and throw that um, and there's the uh, the other bit and we're ready to now fit the new one so I'll go and ditch this and we'll get the new one popped in it at the door right then here is the new one and as you can see we've got the all the sliders in place and all that sort of stuff now one thing worth noting is this bit here that um, broke off the old one is on this one so we don't need to worry about that too much it's all um, it's all good and the window basically sits in between those two and sandwiched between and then the uh, that wheel goes through through the hole in the window and then engages into this thread here so that's what it's actually screwing into and make just got to make sure that the window is sandwiched between these two pieces of plastic and the same at this end Okay, what they've also given us is a couple of um, uh, brand new screws. Now these look to be the ones that um, hold the motor on, onto the regulator, which is in that hole, that hole, and that hole. So those three holes there um, are where the, mount, uh, the motor mounts up to, and they've given us three brand new screws. This tie wrap here, I'll just snip it off. All that's there for is just to prevent the the pulley wheel in the center from um, from falling out in, in essence okay um let's prep it for fitment and there's little covers on each of the studs these three studs so take all of those out and then now we're ready to offer it up to the door so let's uh, let's get on with that okay obviously because there's cables in the middle you can you've got the flexibility to maneuver it in any way that you want to so i think what i'll try is put in the back portion in first and see how we get on if it doesn't work we can always switch it around the other way so just get it in there like so and then the front part Okay, that seems to have done okay. And then obviously what we need to do now is just line up each of the, each of the studs with their relative positions in the door and then fit the nuts. So I'll pop the nuts on just to get it started and hold it in, in its rough position. And then here, obviously what we've got to do is line up the two at the bottom so that they come out the bottom of the door, which they just have, and again at the top. So the two at the bottom, get each one of them on. And then this one's a little bit awkward to get into. Um, I had to use a magnet to retrieve this nut because as it unscrewed, it dropped off. And there's not really an opening for it to fall into the door. So it was quite awkward to get into. There we are, we've got it 
started. There we are. Right. Okay, so it's in its it's in its relative position right now. So what we can do is go around and tighten up all the uh, all the nuts, and then we'll be in a position to uh, to fit the hand wheels. But obviously, each of these sliders is right at the bottom, and the one at here I'm never going to be able to get into to get the um, to get the hand wheel in uh, in its place. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fit the window switch, turn the ignition on, so that I can lift. So that um, the the whole thing will uh, will lift up, so that I can get access to it, because otherwise the glass is going to be down here, and I've got no way to get my hand in. So in order to be able to do that, I'm going to have to fit the motor, plug the motor in, and all that good stuff, and that will include fitting all the bracketry for the motor. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the next step. But first, I'll get the um, all the nuts tightened up, so that the the regulator is held in place, and then we'll move on to motor fitment. Right then. That is all the nuts tightened, so the the regulator is uh, is held in position. Now there may be a little bit of fettling we need to do to get the motor, uh, the window to go up and down, because obviously if they're if the the two rails are not quite aligned correctly, then it will start to tighten up as um, it puts the window up. So we may need to you know make some slight adjustments, but I think we've, um, I've got them basically mounted in exactly the same place as where the nuts came off, because you can see the marring on the on the on the. The panel behind where the nut used to be so basically what i've done is i've aligned the nut with those marks so hopefully it's all going to be good anyway what we need to do next fit the um fit the motor so motor fitment is pretty straightforward um you can see here we've got teeth a tooth gear and the inside of there is um obviously toothed as well and there's grease inside and all we need to do is offer it up so that that gear sits inside the pulley just like so and then make sure that each of the little lugs are engaged in each of the little screw holes on the uh, on the uh, on the regulator so yeah next what we'll do is um, offer this little bracket up and that goes in behind here and then the back end of the motor pops into it and then sits like so and then we'll just put the screw in to hold the bracket in place and then tighten it up and there we go that is the back end of the motor so now we can take our three brand new screws I still have the three that came out of the old one and as you can see they're pretty much identical um, but we use the new ones why not because we've got them so um, looking in the holes on the regulator there was no actual thread in there so these are actually going to tap their own thread as they're tightened up and I believe they are T20 yep they are so simply tighten them down Snug them up. Okay, there we are. Right, um, in here we've got this little this little clip here, which that cable there slots into. So we'll just pop that back in, and then that is good to go. Okay, so that is the regulator completely installed. Now, what we need to do next is obviously move on to actual fitment of the window, and in order to do that, we need to raise the regulator up slightly. So I'm going to plug in the motor now, just like so. And then what I can do now is uh, obviously I can turn on the ignition and then um, plug this back in here and we should be able to lift the motor. Right, okay, I've turned the ignition on. I've got the uh, switch plugged in. So now if we give the 
switch a little pull, hopefully it should. There we go. So I reckon about there is probably going to be where we want to be. So if I turn the ignition off now, I can disconnect this because I don't want it left just hanging there. Um, and then we can look at sliding the window back into the slot, dropping it down to each of the clamps, making sure it goes in between those two plastic fingers so it's sandwiched between the two, and then look at getting the hand wheels back on. So now we know that we've got no requirement for this. This is obviously to go in the bin with the, the old uh, regulator, much like that one. So we've got the two hand wheels here, and all we need to do is uh, fit them back on once we get the window in. So I'll go and grab the window and we'll get it slotted in. Okay, let's get the window installed and back into its slot. Push it in at the front and then allow the back to come down. And then once it's inside, I can grab it from underneath. And then what I need to do is on each of those clamps, I just need to make sure that it goes into the inside of those little plastic sections. So it gets, as I said before, so it gets sandwiched. And I think we're looking good. Yep, we're looking good there. And yep, we're looking good there. Okay, so now we can take our hand wheel and what we can do is screw it in by hand until it starts to tighten up. And that one is, and then same on this side. it in and tighten her up hand tight this one's a bit more awkward with my left hand I've got to be honest okay there we go and that one's now aligned right now before we go crazy what we'll need to do is we will need to ensure that the window aligns with the door shut so I haven't tightened them down fully, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the door um, and then we're going to um, put the window all the way up. With the window all the way up, we should see if it sits straight um, and, or if it needs any adjustment. And um, if I look in the tiers or the Hanes, there will be a measurement um, for the top of the window against this um, seal. So what I'll do, I'll check that out um, and then I'll bring it back and we'll have a look at getting the window fully aligned. Okay, what I've done, I've put the window all the way up and I've shut the door. Um, and the important thing that I need to measure is this um, gap here against the V-pillar trim. And what that, uh, the manual says it needs to be is 10 mil. Um, if it's not, then what you need to do, just undo the hand wheels and just move the window. The, the hole in the bottom of the glass is quite large. It's probably a good inch across, maybe, maybe not quite an inch, but maybe just below. So there's plenty of movement, either up, down, left, right, whatever. Um, and all you need to do is just slightly adjust it, um, just to bring it forward a bit, just to make this gap. I measure mine, I'm happy with it. And importantly, it needs to be the same at the top as it is at the, um, same at the top as it is at the bottom or vice versa. Okay, so yeah, that's, um, that's uh, where we need to be and I'm happy with that. So what I can do now is I can go back inside uh, and tighten up the, tighten up the hand wheels um, obviously, as I said before, I don't have the C-spanner, so what I need to do is get me a little drift. Um, once they're um, as tight as I can get them by hand, just give them a good tap with that, um, with the drift. And then what it'll do is the plastic, those plastic, that um, little port parts that are sandwiched in either side of the glass, will just gently compress the glass and hold it in position. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll get on with that. I'll give them a little tap, and then we can carry on with the reassembly of the rest of the door. Okay. So um, the glass is installed and I'm happy with it, with its position relative to the regulator and it, where, you know, where it's gonna sit when the, uh, when the door's closed. What we need to do is we need to tell the car the, the limits of the window um, so that the anti-trap feature works correctly. Uh, in order to do that, what we need to do is just turn on the ignition and take the window all the way down and then all the way up. When, as it gets to the top, keep the finger held on the up 
um, side of the switch for another second and that will allow the car to learn where it is. One second and then you can let go. Okay, so now um, the car um, knows the positions of the window. When we close the door, um, the window will go up and when we open the door, the window will come down. So everything will be good. Okay, what we need to do now is um, reassemble the door. We're happy with everything. There's nothing um, untoward anywhere. There's no cables being trapped uh, under, the, under the window. And uh, yeah, we're all good. So what I'll do, I will throw the door card all back on, get the trims um, reinstalled on the outside of the door. That is literally a case of just put, putting the front end in um, and, then, and then pressing it all the way down. Um, uh, and, and then, yeah, uh, putting the car back together. So what I'll do, I'll go and grab the trim, we'll install that together, and then I will put the door card back on. Okay, uh, as I said before, this little rail just here uh, is what engages in this this slot. Uh, at the front, what we need to do underneath the mirror is just engage it fully at the front, just making sure that the trim is on its rail and then push it forward just like so and then gently push it down all the way to the back until it's fully engaged and there we are that is that installed okay so that was um, that was a really easy part what i'll do now is disconnect the switch for the window and then the vapor barrier can be brought back up and installed back against the door just ensuring that it's stuck all the way around and there we are that that is that there we go so yeah all we need is the release for the door pull, uh, the door handle, the interior door handle, the um, switch cable, and the speaker cable. So yeah, um, all I need to do now is uh, reinstall the door panel. So what I'll do, I'll um, get on with that. If you want to know how to do that, you've uh, obviously, if you've seen the video again, I've left a link um, to it and again in the description, so you can uh, go and follow that. So I'll go, I'll get that on, and then uh, I'll bring you back in a moment. Okay, there we are, the uh, door card installed and everything back to normal. If we press the button down, press the button up, there we are, beautiful, 100% working. And I'm absolutely stoked with that. So if we uh, close the door, goes up just as it should, open the door, it drops just as it should. Okay, there we are, job done. Um, not a particularly challenging job, but if you've never been inside the door of one of these before, you may not know, um, you know how it how it goes together. Um, yeah, the uh, the the um, regulator itself is uh, that I used is not a genuine one. The genuine ones are stupid money, and, and I'm just not prepared to pay that for a part um, that isn't actually made by BMW. They just put their own stamp on it. So yeah, I used an aftermarket one and I thought it was fairly reasonably priced at around £45, I think it was. Well, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, so if you need one, you can go and check it out. Um, absolutely, you know, it's perfectly fine. You know, a £45 regulator versus a £300 regulator from BMW. Um, yeah, I could I could replace that six times um, it, yeah, for, the, for the price of one BMW one. And I would rather do that than pay BMW 300 quid. So yeah, there, there, we, there we are. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, then give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe consider subscribing um, because we, you know, we've got plenty of uh, different content on this uh, on this channel, different cars. We've got several BMWs, Minis, and loads and loads of motorbikes um, that uh, that we've got projects um, ongoing with at the moment. So yeah, um, feel free to uh, feel free to pop along again and uh, check out what we've got. Um, join us on the socials as well: Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I'll leave the links to those in the description and um, hopefully I will see you all again for the uh, for the very next video. Thank you very much for stopping by. Take care. Bye bye now.